I guess we are live. A very good evening to all of you. How are you guys doing? Welcome to another session of Dear. Drop everything and read. We are doing episode 19 today. The last two episodes had to be cancelled due to various technical reasons, but we are going to cover them up in the coming week. So don't worry there. My name is Karishma. If you haven't done these sessions before, I would suggest that whenever you are in mood of doing something interesting, reading an article that is otherwise difficult, you find it boring and you want to, you know, learn about things in an interesting way, maybe you can look at some of the episodes that I have done in the past. So uh, today I'm going to do a very interesting article based on natural sciences. You know, it was in demand. All of you had been asking for uh, scientific passages. So here I am with a passage which is completely based on natural science. And we are going to have a lot of fun with it. Okay. I have a question for you. And because there is a 15 second gap between you and me, I'm giving you those 15 seconds to type in your answer. All right. So that I can read after I have made the announcements. My question to you is how many of you like the family of things like dates, khajur, chwara, okay, prunes, which is dried alu bukhara, plums, okay, dried plums, and figs, which is known as anjir, okay. So how many of you are fond of dates, prunes, and figs? That's my question. I would wait for your replies. Let me do the announcements by then. Just a moment. Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about. This is figs and figs and figs. So this is a fresh fig. Okay. And this is the dried fig that you get as anjir in the market. Uh, the best anjir in the market and the most expensive one is the Turkish fig, which is huge in size. Okay. Afghani figs are also famous and they are imported from Afghanistan. Turkish figs are the best and uh, you know, they're usually available at trade fairs and you know, or you can you may buy them online. But anyway, so we'll talk about this and more and I'll explain you this creepy diagram uh, later on. Okay, so if you want to get in touch with me for my classes and for your CAD preparation, this is where you can do that. So Telegram channel is known by the name of Karishma's Vanquishers. Instagram channel is also Vanquishers. There is an underscore in between. My live cat classes are going on at An Academy Plus. I'm taking 10 sessions on YouTube, dear series, and I also take five free classes a month. So I did this class today with all of you at 1 p.m. We have two more classes to go for this month. This is happening at 1 p.m. on next Saturday, and this one happens at 5.30 on the last day of the month, which is 31st of March. In case you are not a Plus subscriber yet and you want to begin your preparation, this is the code that you could be using so that you get yourself a 10% discount. I'm coming up with various plus courses. I'm already doing this course, which is about to get over. If you're a beginner, you should, you must. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, I really urge you to join this course on the 24th of March from 7 to 8 p.m. and clarify basics with me, RC basics. And the intermediate level is also launched now, which will happen on 17th of May, which is far off. I know, but it's already launched. This will happen from 7 p.m. These are 90 minutes classes. These are 60 minute classes. And we are doing a complete course from scratch, para jumbles, para completion and everything from 16th of April also. So all these courses are live on my page. Just go and enroll yourselves. These are the various batches that are starting these days. You can check them on the Academy website and the app. The weekly scholarship test happens tomorrow at 12 p.m. Please participate. Who knows, you may get a scholarship and you may get your subscription rates further reduced. To be able to unlock the test, you just need to use the same code Karishma Live. Iconic is another offering by An Academy where you get personal mentorship and OMETS preparation extra. Okay, so I can see a few messages only about dates. Guys, I'm not talking about going on a date. Yeah, I'm talking about Khajur and Chwara and I'm talking about Anjir and I'm talking about Prunes. Prunes are not very common in India, I know that, but at least uh, dates and figs are. Anyway, Ask It Out feature is also available for non-plus subscribers. Please check it out. And these are the various subscription rates. And I must tell you that the rates are going up really high this time. Okay, so this is the time to take the subscription and get yourself a discount using this code. Otherwise, it will be too late and you can check out the new prices. There's a lot of difference. Okay, so 32,800 and 21,000. Huge difference there. Okay, so now is the time to subscribe. So, all right, let's begin the interesting story. I have been, in, uh, in, you know, excited about this article since... Tuesday, but we never had uh, any sessions on Wednesday and Friday. So here I am. I love figs. Okay. My husband loves dates more, but I am very fond of prunes and figs. And I have this routine for many years now, where every morning with my cup of tea, I would have a few almonds, badam and alternate days, I eat one whole fig and a prune. 
okay so yeah i am really fond of figs and prunes so i think this is why i am excited about this article because what i came to know when i read this article i it was jaw dropping for me so i hope you like it love the fig the produce section of the grocery store is a botanical disaster most people know that the tomato is technically a fruit so biologically how do you define a fruit a fruit is anything that has seeds okay beej hai and it's also anything that develops from the ovary of a flowering plant so you must have heard of tomato being a fruit and not a vegetable although it is available with the sabzi wala not the fruit wala yeah but you know we now know that tomato tomato is technically a fruit we also know that egg plant which is known as aubergine or brinjal in india and aubergine in the uh, west uh, it's also a fruit because you have all that all those seeds in the bengan and you know you can see your mom scolding the sabzi wala kitne beej wala bengan ta and stuff but yeah it's also technically a fruit a cucumber also has seeds a squash also has seeds squashes are not really popular in india you can google images and see it looks like an elongated pumpkin kind of thing so all of these are fruits so we know that now okay a banana which grows from a flower and a single ovary is actually a berry so again a biological terminology going there so we think that banana is actually a fruit it's actually a flower because it is developing from a single ovary uh, no, it develops from a flower and is actually a berry sorry not a flower while a strawberry which we consider as a berry it grows from a flower and has several ovaries it is not a berry at all it is an aggregate fruit so aggregate fruit is you know made up of multiple uh, fruits ovaries there so it has several ovaries so aggregate fruit the most confusing classification though will start showing up on the american shelves this month this is a recent article shoppers will find mission figs with the grapes kiwis and other fruit but a clever botanist would sell them at the florist with the fresh cut roses so the american shelves you know they will start decorating figs now fresh figs are not popular in india uh, the dry figs you will find them at any departmental store but as the fresh figs are concerned you find them your uh, you know towards maharashtra you will not find them in the northern belt they're not popular in up delhi etc so most people don't know them so maybe if you if you have seen this and if you've not seen this i i can't really blame you because this is not easily available uh, in most parts of the country but anyway so this says that american shelves will be full of it and there will be mission figs which is going on so grapes are available and kiwis are available and figs are available but if you're a clever botanist then you will sell them at the florist why because the fig is actually a flower so what you see here fig is actually a closed flower so it blooms inside otherwise if you i'm sure you've seen hibiscus this is hibiscus season you can see hibiscus in my telegram picture also so i have three hibiscus is growing every day so you have the anther and the pollen blooming outwards whereas if you notice in a fig everything is going inward so the pollen and the anther and this in there's nothing outside so the pollination has to happen within so now how does that happen the answer lies here so let's read it so although many people dismiss figs as a geriatric delicacy or the sticky stuff inside bad cookies like my brother there are in fact something awesome so you know i absolutely love them and my brother just hates them because he's like oh, they are they are yucks they are sticky whatever whatever and i'm like no I, this is sweet and there's no sugar so i love it but anyway so most people will say it's a geriatric delicacy geriatrics is the branch of medicine that talks about old aged people and figs are very good for digestion so when you're old and you cannot digest all the crappy food and you have constipation every other day bhiga hua anjeer or soaked figs are a very uh, you know well known remedy throughout the world especially in our country soaked dates and soaked figs are considered really good for the gut and they are so people will say no this is you know a food which is made for old people we will not like it and some people will say no this is sticky and i don't want them in my cookies but they're actually something awesome what are they they are enclosed flowers that bloom modestly inward why modestly because otherwise a flower has to show off that how beautiful i am only then the insects will come and pollinate yeah but this flower is very modest it keeps the beauty hidden okay so the beauty is inside it's not outside flamboyant show offs on other plants so we have flamboyant show offs flowers are what they are reproductive organs so unless you show them off nobody is coming to mate right no the insects are not interested i'm sure you can see all sorts of wasps and bees already in your balconies and terrace gardens and whatever you have you are lucky if you have a grounded gardens days it's rare to find in uh, huge cities but yeah so you you know you have you have flamboyant flamboyant is attractive and stylish so instead of an attractive and stylish plant which is showing off all its beauty you have a plant here you have a flower that blooms inward jo andar ki taraf hai bite a fig in half and you will discover a core of tiny blossoms only when you cut it in half and you bite it in half 
you will see that the beauty lies inside it's not outside it reminds me of a watermelon though all kinds of critters critters is basically another word for creatures or animals okay if you if you did not know this you can write this so critters are nothing but creatures or animals not only humans frequent fig trees frequent here is a verb so which means they come they visit frequently but the plants owe their existence to what may be evolution's most intimate partnership between two species you've heard of the word symbiosis which is also the name of an entire university chain symbiosis means mutual benefit so you must have done the word symbiosis in biology in 8th standard maybe where they taught you about leguminous plants and nitrogen fixation bacteria yeah so this is what it says this is evolution's most intimate partnership between two species because a fig is actually a ball of flowers it requires pollination to reproduce but because the flowers are sealed you cannot just crawl inside that's not possible for every bug to do so okay the task belongs to a minuscule minuscule is absolutely tiny insect known as the fig wasp you know wasps in northern india and hindi are known as tataiya the yellow honey bee kind of structure whose sting will make you yell for life you know the sting is really painful i can see them all in my balcony every day and i'm just shutting the doors all the time but fig wasps are different they look like this and they are very tiny so these are fig wasps so they look the same but they're actually very tiny this looks huge because it's a magnified picture but otherwise they are tiny so this guy whose life cycle is intertwined with the figs is responsible for pollinating this flower that grows inwards mother wasps lay their eggs in an unripe fig so jab kachcha hai when it is unripe when it is raw there the mother wasp will you know crawl down inside and it will lay its eggs ande deti hai wahan par after their offspring hatch so multiple uh, uh, you know wasps will hatch from there inside the fruit itself they will mature the males will mate and then they will chew a tunnel to the surface so they will find their way khate 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 the rasta banate and they find their way to the surface what happens the moment they reach the surface they die when their task is complete the magic of nature so you know they come the female comes lays down its eggs the mating happens the kids are born parenting is limited the father tries to walk out and then it's dead what happens to the mother let's read the females follow they take flight riding the winds until they smell another fig tree so the female usually escapes they will follow take flight as in they will fly and they will ride the winds as in whatever direction the wind is going in the women will also go there and they will keep on flying until they find another anjir ka ped another fig tree one species of wasp in africa travels 10 times farther than any other known pollinator so you know you must have done various kinds of dispersals at school wind dispersal water dispersal this is insect pollination natural dispersal so there are there are species which will travel 10 times farther when the insects discover the right specimen they go inside so you know they, they they will sit and they think that this is right for me they will go inside there are some 750 varieties it's mentioned in this article that do it and set, and deposit the pollen from their birthplace so from wherever you got the pollen you mated right the women the woman mated the male died now the woman is flying so whatever pollen she had she will carry it to a new plant then the females will lay new eggs and the cycle begins again okay for the wasp mother however devotion to the fig plant soon turns tragic so again she is also not going to last soon but her death is pretty interesting some of you may be like eu in a while but yeah that's what happens so for the wasp mother devotion doesn't last much a fig's entrance way is booby trapped to destroy her wings so the moment you enter the fig it is booby trap booby trap you must have heard in movies no it's a setup as the moment you keep your foot either you are trapped or there is a bomb blast so you know the wings get destroyed so if the wings are destroyed she cannot fly so then what happens she can never visit another plant so where does she end up inside the fruit when you eat a dried fig you are probably chewing fig wasp mummies too so now this sounds very i don't know pukish especially if you're a vegetarian or a vegan then it's worse because then you are like i ate figs all my life and i never thought that there is dead bodies inside but that's what i have always you know said in my classes also that please stop being simplistic about veg and non veg you never know what is going inside your food or what sort of pesticides are being used what sorts of bone powders are used in the agricultural industry and so on and so forth you're free to eat what you want but stop you know demonizing other people's choices so here was an eye opener for me i never knew that figs are actually full of dead bodies of wasps and you never see them you know i really tried looking very hard at my fig today morning and i couldn't see a thing 
simply because this entire body gets dissolved right in the plant and it turns into a protein which actually makes the figs very nutritious so i'm very happy about it that i could not see it if i saw a dead body then i don't know what would i have done the fig and the fig wasp are a superlative there this is like out of the world example of what biologists call codependent evolution don't know you know this has been going on for ages this sounds so magical to me and they have been together and they've been doing this for so long the plants and insects have been growing all together for more than 60 million years almost every species of fig plant more than 715 in total has its own species of wasp 750 kinds of figs and every species has its own kind of a wasp to do the pollination isn't that amazing isn't nature so beautifully perfect reminds me of the hauntings of blymenor perfectly splendid although some commercial fig production favors varieties that do not require pollinations because you know people are really fond of figs and they're very good for health and they're very popular throughout the world now in commercial production they they do they try to do things everything mechanically where you do not have to do any you do not have to wait for natural pollination they are grown from cuttings and produce fruits without any seeds but codependence has not made the fig and the fig wasp weak usually what happens in case of codependence is that if i keep giving you and you know i may become weak okay but i have to take something in order to be sustaining this relationship but that doesn't happen like it can with humans the fig and fig wasps pollination system is extremely efficient compared with that of the other plants some of which would just trust the wind built to blow their pollen where it needs to go we did an rc you know in the plus class the other day where we talked about pollination okay wind pollination is really common so you know you just send out your pollen grains in the universe expecting a female to catch them and give you children so the figs don't do that and the figs specialize flowers far from isolating them in an evolutionary niche have allowed them to radiate throughout the natural world so th- these are special flowers and they they're not isolated because this is like completely something complicated and different happening in fact this is this has allowed them to radiate throughout the world it's 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 found everywhere fig plants can be shrubs you know small jhadiyan vines which means creepers you know like grapes or they can be trees strangler figs sprout and strangler what is what do you mean by strangle ghotna okay suffocating they sprout in the branches of another tree drop their roots to the forest floor and then they slowly envelop their host or oh, sounds painful reminds me of parasite okay the branches of a large strangler fig can stretch over acres and produce a million figs in one flowering one flowering you know one season of flowers one million figs that's what a strangler fig branch can do they themselves can be brown red white orange yellow green wild figs are not as sweet as the plump and plump is fat okay and purple mission figs that you buy at the farmers market these are these are the ones which are the most common that you get in pune etc so they, these are the ones that are most common wild figs are not as sweet you know they are usually animals like them okay the squirrels will eat them up so human consumption ke liye the most common ones are these the purple ones and these seeds sprout where other plants would flounder flounder is you know struggle so where the other plants are struggling fig is a bad ass thug she would just try you you know she doesn't have any issues she's a complete wonder woman rooftops cliff sides volcanic islands you name it you will find them everywhere the fig genus ficus genus hai genius nahi hai sounds like a genius though genus is again biology okay so you have genes and species and stuff so ficus is the name is the most varied one in the tropics it also routinely shows up in the greenhouse and the garden so it's literally growing everywhere koi jagah chodi hai isne rooftops cliff tie cliff sides volcanic islands greenhouse garden what not but mere hi nahi hai the variety and adaptability of fig plants make them a favorite food stuff among animals because there's so much of variety and it's so adaptable you find them everywhere so obviously animals are going to like it right in 2001 a team of researchers published a review of the scientific literature and found records of fig consumption for nearly 1300 birds and mammal species one food being eaten by 1300 species that's huge one of the researchers mike shanahan a rainforest ecologist and the author of a forthcoming book about figs gods wasps and stranglers what a name gods wasps and stranglers stranglers here are strangler figs had spent time studying the malaysian fig trees as a phd candidate in 1997 guys this is how a phd is supposed to be the phd that is happening so frequently in our country ghar par baithkar that's not a phd phd means researching going out on the field and checking things he would sometimes lie beneath a huge strangler fig and record its visitors returning repeatedly for several days i would typically see 25 to 30 different species coming to the tree and feeding themselves shanahan told me 
The animals would include lost, lots of squirrel species, curious creatures called tree shrews, monkeys, a whole range of bird species like flower peckers, hornbills, all the fruit eating birds in Asia. There were also pigeons. Pigeons are everywhere, including in my balcony, shitting everywhere. Pigeons are the most badass animals I know. Fruit doves, fairy bluebirds, barbets, parrots, you name it. Everybody likes figs. As the biologist Daniel Jansen put it in How to Be a Fig, an article from 1979, his famous quote is, Who eats figs? Everybody. So maybe you guys are not eating. You guys need to update your taste buds, isn't it? With good reason too. Figs are high in calcium, easy to chew and digest. And unlike plants that fruit seasonally, they can be found year round. So like I told you, I don't know, mujhe yaad hi nahi hai when, I don't remember when I started having this, maybe some three years ago. Every single, every single alternate morning I have a fig. So this is the fig plant's accommodation of the fig wasp. A fig wasp departs a ripe fig to find an unripe fig, which means that there always must be figs at different stages. So if this wasp is, you know, fig, always flying and it is traveling from fig, to fig, ripe to unripe, which means there is some stage of fig species out there. So it's going on all year round. It's not a seasonal thing. As a result, an animal can usually fall back on the fig when a mango or a lychee is not in season. So when mangoes and lychees are not in season and insects and animals can't find anything, figs is their go-to food. Sometimes figs are the only things between an animal and starvation. It, it saves so many animals from starving. According to a 2003 study of Uganda's Budongo forest, for instance, figs are the soul, which means the only source of fruit for chimpanzees at certain times of the year. Our pre-human ancestors probably filled up on figs. You know, our ancestors were also very fond of it. The plants are what is known as a key, keystone species. Keystone species, you should, you know, read a little about it on Google. Keystone species is a species which is, whose contribution is immense if you compare it to its population. So the population may be, you know, low, but the contribution is huge. The, contrib the contribution is immense to the system. Yank them, yank them is like pull them, okay? You remove them from the jungle and the whole ecosystem would die, would, would collapse. That's the importance of fig trees. You can't unmine them. Fig's popularity means that they can play a central role in being deforested and land back to life. Uh, deforested land back to life. The plants grow quickly in inhospitable places and thanks to the endurance of the wasps, they can survive at low density. So, you know, even if it is a land which is deforested, that land can be brought back to life by a fig plant. And the wasps also keep continuing their work. So the survival is possible even if there are not many trees around. And the animals they attract will put it politely, deposit nearby the seeds of other fruits they've eaten, thereby introducing a healthy variety of new plants. So let's say there is a land where there are new trees. It's deforested. But if you grow one fig plant, wasps will come because they survive and adapt. These there will be fruits and there will be fruits on this plant. Okay, there will be wasps. So an entire ecosystem develops. Now let's say squirrels start coming. So squirrels will bring in nuts also from here and there, from your house also maybe. So they will deposit the uh, seeds there. So animal dispersal is happening. So soon you will see that after a few years, the land has been revived. The deforested land is no more deforested. You will have a new ecosystem developing there. Nigel Turker, as a restoration ecologist in Australia, has recommended that 10% of new plants in tropical reforestation projects can be fig seedlings. You can do 10% of reforestation just by figs. Rhett Harrison, a former fig biologist, told me that the ratio could even be higher. My inclination is that we should be going to some of these places and just planting a few figs. That's what they want to do. Just plant a few figs and you may be sorted. Fig trees are also sometimes the only trees left standing from former forests. Former forests is older forests. In parts of India, for instance, they are considered holy. So figs are worshipped or they are considered very holy and pure. And farmers are reluctant to chop them down. So you ask a farmer to chop down a fig tree and they'll say no. It's very common in India. They'll not chop it down. Diverse cultures developed taboos against felling fig trees, Shanahan told me. So there are various cultures, different cultures, you know, completely different from each other. Yet they will be common on things like let's not chop down a fig tree. They said they were homes to gods and spirits. As they devta rehte hain, right? And made them places of prayer and symbols of their society. You can't really taste the fig's spiritual aura in a fig newton, but it shines in the mythology of world religion. So mythology may fig is widely spoken about. So maybe you don't hear it from Newton, but you will hear it from people who are researching mythology and religion. For example, Buddha found enlightenment under a fig tree. And the Egyptian pharaohs built wooden sarcophagi from ficus circumus. So sarcophagi is an interesting word. Sarco means flesh. Okay. And 
phagus i have already taught you in the class is eating so the word sarcophagus means a coffin this is usually the kind of coffin that you see in you know game of thrones and stuff and in in various western series where uh, on the coffin they also draw the guy who is dead so the king's face will be drawn and everything and they will place the eyes and something stone coffins they are known as sarcophagus very popular in egyptian roman and greek cultures an apple tree might have caused adam and eve their innocence so that's what an apple tree i hope you know the story of adam and eve going to the garden of Ed- eden god asked them not to eat the apple tree but the fruit was very uh, uh, i would say red and luscious so finally they ate it and then they ate it they knew everything about sexuality and then they found out that they were naked and then the world started and the story also says that the moment they knew that they were naked they were so embarrassed about it because before that they did not have that dunya dari ka knowledge yeah? i mean that a child does not care whether he is naked he'll just go around you know okay the house you have to tell him that he is naked so adam and eve did not know but the moment they ate this fruit because the serpent had uh, bhadkaud them you know um, agitated them provoked them to eat it they they hid behind the uh, some shrubs and they broke leaves from a fig tree okay and then they covered their genitals and everything with whatever they thought must be covered so this says an apple tree might have caused adam and eve their innocence but a fig tree whose leaves they covered to cover their nudity they used to cover their nudity gave them back some dignity if only they had preferred figs in the first place agar apple na khaya hota if they had not eaten an apple and ate eaten a fig we might all be still living in eden because then there would be no world according to christianity so we, we we would just have been one adam and one eve and god and we would have lived happily ever after without worrying about cat and mat and gmat and what not anyway i love this article and the ending uh, kartik you're asking me some good resources for deer i'm not sure exactly what your question is if you're saying uh, sources for the articles then i have discussed various kinds of articles in all the episodes you can go through them and on the last slide and the first slide i always mention where has the article been taken from for example here this is mentioned that love the fig is the source of the article and it's a new yorker article your homework is to write your views on the passage you can go through various websites by the way i took this interesting diagram you can just go through it so a pollen laden female wasp will enter and then you know there are both male and female flowers the eggs are laid and then how the ovaries work the maturation works the male flowers never leaves the female wasp flies and then she looks for another one so this is the beautiful cycle that goes ahead okay so ha huh, i know drop everything and read is dear what i'm saying is by what do you mean by resources this is the name of the series that i'm doing so when you go to every episode the name of the article the source of the article is mentioned in every single article okay if you want me to give you names of more websites you can read articles from new york times you can read articles from a on essays okay and this playlist is made kartik so you can just go to the playlist and watch them you can read articles from uh, uh, project syndicate scientific american time us new yorker washington journal bloomberg economist.com anything and everything that you like okay uh, in case you're a new student and you wish to get in touch with me these are the details this is my discount code these are the upcoming free classes to attend a free class you just need to use this code and you are sorted and good to go now our next session happens on monday which is 22nd we'll meet with another interesting session and we have two more sessions after that left for this month on 24th and 26th so uh, please just go through it and make sure that you subscribe to the channel the sa- the sessions are happening uh, every monday wednesday and friday okay so i take these sessions at 4:30 pm on monday wednesday and friday and you can join me here if you have any more uh, recommendations for the articles you can leave them in the comment section in the comment section not in the live chat uh, session because comments are more accessible later on okay so yeah i took the diagram from uh, there of uh, shubham anything else that you would like me to address did you enjoy the article i absolutely loved it if you're fond of fix then i'm sure you would love it more all right then have a good day ahead take good care of yourselves and keep reading such articles as a homework for creative writing just try and write down you know maybe a 50 to 100 word summary on this and uh, this is how you will grow for vat because you are not going to get all prepared for vat in one day or one month the sooner you just you start the better and these are interesting small assignments that you could do on a lazy afternoon in summer when you don't feel like doing anything else okay anyway i hope you have a good day i'll see you on monday with another fascinating read i hope you have a good time thank you so much